Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Jesper and in this video I'm going to talk about dermatomyositis. This is going to be the last video in our series of collagenosis under our pathology videos. Dermatomyositis is an inflammatory disease which causes muscle weakness, muscle pain as well as skin rashes. It can also have various other symptoms that will manifest, and we will talk about those later. As with other collagenosis, women will more frequently be affected than men, and in the case of dermatomyositis, approximately twice as many women are affected as men. The point of diagnosis is most often made between the fourth and sixth decade of the patient's life. In elderly, it is often of paraneoplastic origin, meaning it is due to some tumor formation. In younger patients, the cause is often viral infections. It is, however, thought that there is also a genetic predisposition and environmental role in the development of the disease. The symptomatic profile is complex, but the main characteristic is the muscle weakness and pain. This initially starts in the shoulder and pelvis and then progresses further proximally and eventually patients will develop tetraparesis, which means that all four limbs will be involved. In the late stage, cranial symptoms like dysphagia, when it is painful and difficult for the patients to swallow, can be observed. I would like to mention that the disease is not a demyelinating disease, so the reflexes upon examination will be unaffected and they will not be changed. In dermatomyositis, in difference to polio, there is also skin involvement, and the skin will appear violet bluish and will present with whitish papules and subcutaneous calcifications. Many patients also experience Raynaud's syndrome, which is a form of vasospasm, which leads to white bluish discoloration of the skin in the fingers and toes of the patients in response to exposure to cold weather. Also, muscles of the internal organs are involved, so smooth muscles, and we can have a smooth muscle myocarditis. Different pulmonary disorders like alveolitis or pulmonary fibrosis may also be observed. As mentioned, dysphagia can also be a symptom. Approximately 15 to 20% of the cases are thought to be of paraneoplastic origin, and the pathogenesis involves amyloid deposition in the muscles, as well as formation of autoantibodies against the muscles. The antibody formation creates the base for diagnosis of the disease, as laboratory parameters will change and can be observed in blood samples. Due to the damage of the muscles, creatinine kinase, myoglobulin, AST and lactate dehydrogenase will all be elevated in the blood. Inflammatory markers such as BSG, CRP, leukocytes as well as gamma globulin will be increased. Remember that gamma globulins we do not observe in a normal blood sample but rather under gel electrophoresis. As a result of being an autoimmune disease, there will also be antibodies to discover in the blood. One of them is ANA, or anti-nuclear antibody, which is an unspecific antibody, and it is also seen in many other autoimmune diseases. However, more specifically, but also more rarely observed, are some antibodies like MI2 antibody and anti-JO1 antibody. They are rarer, but more specific for dermatomyositis. Another way of diagnosing dermatomyositis is to obtain an MRI picture. The muscle damage will be most visible in the T2 window, so keep that in mind. Another way is that we can take a muscle biopsy 
and we can see there that the lymphocytic infiltrate will be seen around the muscle fibers as well as around the blood vessels. The inflammation and damage will lead over time to necrosis of muscle fibers as well as occlusion of capillaries. Necrosis and atrophy will also be seen. Dermatomyositis cannot be cured until today, but medication can be used to try to improve the muscle efficacy and increase the patient's life quality by being able to do more everyday chores by themselves and preventing negative symptoms. This is done by giving oral glucocorticosteroids as well as immune suppressants, glucocorticoids as, uh, also work in itself as an immune suppressant, and in severe cases, IV immunoglobulins can be used to fight the body's own immune response. In the case of a paraneoplastic origin, to find and treat the tumor will also improve the patient's status. In the end, I want to compare the clinical appearance of lupus erymatotus and dermatomyositis. If you have not seen the other videos to collagenosis yet, especially not to lupus, then if you want, you can see them after this video. We also have them in this playlist. Lupus erymatosus, or the butterfly rash disease, presents more often with a headache, dizziness, brain fog, and other neurological symptoms than dermatomyositis. Dermatomyositis, however, have some of these symptoms, but more specifically dysphagia. Also, ulcers in the oral cavity and anemia are more frequently seen in lupus. However, more pathognomic for dermatomyositis is the pain and weakness in the muscles, leading to difficulty in getting up from a chair lifting the patient's arm over their head or doing tasks requiring fine feeling in the hands and fine motorics can be difficult. For both diseases, it is typical to experience a skin rash, fatigue as well as photosensitivity, so sensitivity to daylight and joint pain. However, in lupus, the skin rash will more frequently manifest specifically on and around the nose forming the shape of a butterfly. This is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we would be very happy if you would subscribe to our channel if you like this video and want to see more. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.